systems that impact our lives in a positive or negative. I have spent the last three weeks trying to come to grips with the passing of the most influential person in my life, my mom. I have yet to find one negative woman in this human being who taught me things a formal education could not. In doing so, she will shape the person I could become with her infinite wisdom and heart of gold. Lisa Elaine Curtin was born on September 9, 1943, in the beautiful island of Barbados. She was the only girl of six children born to Horace and Verona Hardy. Her mother unfortunately died at the tender age of 27, leaving behind her six children. My mom being just aged two could not remember her, and it was a painful void she carried throughout her life, and the one me I could not fill. Despite this painful part of her life, my mother had the capacity to care for and love other human beings in the humanity that lay beyond borders and differences. Long before we bandied around words like human rights and tolerance, she accepted everyone as they came and gave evil when she herself had her own time. My mother became a mom herself at the tender age of 16 to Sandra, my older sister, my brothers Charles, Walter, and David followed, and then came in, which is his invention in She most definitely had her hands full, especially with those boys. As they say, boys were boys. I was the quietest of the lot, and those were her words, not me. Maybe God decided we had to give her little sister a little My dad was a good father to us, but the relationship with mom was a rocky one, and they eventually parted ways. He was present in our lives, but the reality is, mothers are often the ones who take on the responsibility of rearing and caring for children generally. So in the prime of her life, she faced the reality of being a single parent with five children. She loved her children, but was strict. She spoke to us extensively about life and passed on the knowledge she had gained through conversations and stories. We also had a tight schedule. School was Monday to Friday, library on Saturday, and church on Sundays. Mom worked well and hard to provide for us and never asked anyone for anything. I can remember being about age five and seeing my mom returning home from her job at the best year of home in the evening time. When we saw her black and white outfit coming across the pasture, we would send records to speed like lightning trying to get home before she realized we had to fight her orders and make fishing in the pond. We would have our catch of the day somewhere in containers, thousands, and tadpoles. She would change her clothes and pack a little tray with nuts, sweets, mint, snacks, etc., and sell those items at the corner of the control to supplement her income. She also kept sheep, pigs, chickens, ducks, etc. There was also a ready supply of spinach, pumpkin, and passion fruit plants, which we of course made use of, as well as an almond tree and coconut tree around our humble dwelling. Mom prided herself on her independence, and would also make additional money from washing, pressing, and cooking for others. She believed in hard work and in doing a good job, whatever the task. I truly believe she could be labeled as a perfectionist. When she had a task to do, she was not satisfied until it was done well. She was thrifty and always loved a good bargain. She was a good cook and taught us the correct way to do the traditional dishes that are part of our ancient heritage. Whether it was how to stir the cream, make or cook our baked corn, she passed on her knowledge. I can still remember going to my fish with her in the backyard and her explaining all the ways to utilize these parts. Fish neck raw, fried nuts, and my favorite. Friday then with the tail stuck inside the leg. She made an excellent cassava cone and at one point sold it to the neighborhood bread vendor who passed through by the pan and he in turn was selling to his customers by the stores. We never went home as she would make sure that she utilized what she had available. She would always say one should never run out of flour, sugar, salt, or oil. So you know what that means. Some good old age of weeks. Not good for children. But she had firm rules, especially as it related to etiquette. She would threaten us with lashes, but hardly had any spirit, unless we wanted to be able to step foot by her standards. She had perfected that famous black mother look, which is more like a silly glass. When she did that look, we knew what it meant. It was time to straighten up and fly right, to use her words. Her biggest fear raising us as a single parent was her son's going astray or her daughter's making poor choices in life. 
that would negatively impact them. She ruled the home with an iron fist and was adamant that none of her sons would grace the halls of their very prison under her watch. We had to play with each other, and too much mingling with outsiders was not her comfort zone at all. She would say familiarity brings content. Hence, we had a fairly peaceful childhood without too much drama. The most drama we would have is what we were in the day to tired of the restrictions of the to away from home to play with his friends hope of returning home without his absence being noticed. He was not redeemed, and she would have his punishment waiting on his return. Charles, she labeled him a comedian because he always had her in stitches as soon as he opened his mouth, his sense of humor. Something I think he inherited from her, but to a much higher level. Sandra, she would say, don't be fooled by her quiet demeanor. Don't anyone trouble her at all because it would not be nice. Trouble she feels is a very serious individual of who she could depend some advice and support. She would say to me, you are always thinking about what the students do, because I look for a good word in most things. Don't act, I have no idea what the students do is. The baby of the lot, Jason, they shared a special one, and we loved her unconditionally. I do believe it was a special gift to her for that season of her life. She also embraced two of her nephews, like me and my son, who remained close to her for her life, and had the sons of her big brother, Keith Carney. We were subjected to the traditions of the time. Things like cut with oil, orange juice, castor oil, a pinch of eggs and salts, or more medicine. In her ways, she was given as a necessary purge. It was not all hard stuff, however. Once a month, she would bang up in and milk an egg and give each of us a typical size of one. Now that was supposed to blow us up. The folks were treated with coconut oil and men claw crystal in the head. The face were down, which we could only do with one finger. That the pork was bad, olive leaves would be added and a piece of flannel cloth. Cuts, we would get the application of the cure of home peroxide. We have drank so many different food and teas that she called them. We are all cool people. Clam cherry, bay leaf, sour stock, raw, hibiscus, ginger, cure for all. You name it, we drank it. My mom had an awful, awesome sense of humor. And I have us in stitches with her anecdotes and stories. Thank you. 
the stage, this was the system green, this is the purple, this is the backwards, this is the purpose. She enjoyed the fellowship. I look forward to the annual projects, Christmas programs, the big mass, the fighting, the body services, and of course the bus excursions. Pastor Morris was the Reverend in charge, and then came the present pastor, Bishop Kevin Morris, with whom she has enjoyed a close relationship for over 30 years. Mom was not very outgoing outside of church and work. She was not a person who went partying or fighting, as she called it, and she disliked large crowds. But she found ways that we could still have a social life. She preferred the more simple things of life. Trips to the beach, while we bathe in the sand, the sun. She would often remind us that the sea has no back door. On my holidays, we would catch the bus and go for the sea and ride to the bay or bash up with her late cousin house. She also liked to take us to shopping at night in Krishnam. For those of the younger generation who have no idea what that means, we would walk and look at clothes on merchandise and display in windows of stores and admire them. Then make our way back home at the end of the night, quite happy, even though we were empty tonight. We would purchase some little treat from the roadside vendors during these many shopping trips to Krishnam. Herself. 
she was so happy to see him and they spent the entire day in fits of laughter, reminiscing of past experiences. It was this man of love and support shown to love by the family that would pave the way to her recovery and overcoming subsequent challenges. Six months after the stroke, things got worse and very painful and tragically. When my brother Jason had my love one to the funeral man, full of ambition and big dreams, lost his life tragically at the age of 20. My mom's world had turned upside down in the space of six months. It was the hardest and most difficult news I have ever had to tell anyone. I feared my mom would give up. Yes, she initially felt down and depressed about losing her son, a child she had raised with the same values as us, the older children, a Romanian, respectful, and responsible man on his way to becoming an electrical engineer and not, had not met such an unfortunate device. My fears were not to me. My mother would dig deep within, would honor her faith in God, and with the support of her family, friends, and the testament church of God esteem, she would fight her way back to a full recovery over a three year span. I have always admired my mother's strength, but I was in awe of her determination and inner fortitude during this period. After putting up the fight of her life from 2006 to 2009, she was able to walk with me and to resume her daily activities with vigor and could be seen all over. We were happy that she had gone through those two major crises and was ready to continue to live with her life on her terms. She made her very first trip overseas to St. Lucia with my family in July of 2009. We had a good laugh, made sure we were cause of a slight delay at the airport after her trusty bottle of Alvarado and her own life in a fork when she had a pack in her carry on bags that popped the alarms on the security point. After that, we continued our journey and she was happy to be able to see another country. We knew she was back at full strength, then on her return to Barbados, she kept forgetting her walker in the places she went. She returned medically on fit during her recovery period. She was free again to move around as she wished and eventually discarded the walk, but she would pick it back up in this sometimes. After her total transformation, she resumed her membership at the Exeter New Testament Church and Jack Clare. She fed me from the years of slavery and waited with my family and set off to live with her with my brother's father who lived alone, having decided not to return to her own home. She was comfortable, happy, and well cared for there, and we all knew she was in guardian of parents. She would remain there for 10 years until her passing on March 26, 2020. At the time of her death, she had become a member of the Wavy branch of the Testament Church, which was just a few doors down from her home and easier to access. She was warm, loved, and and was there, and had built a special relationship and friendship she looked forward with great excitement to the many activities and her new culture family, but always returned to Exeter Church and gave the occasion to visit. She celebrated her 75th birthday at Exeter with her children and her children. To say that my mom's passing has been a shock for the understanding. She was 76 years old and still very full of life and active. Hence her surprise at her passing without warning. I truly expected my mom to be around for many more years to come. Unfortunately, this was not to be. I am forever grateful to the Almighty for lending her to us for the time of day. It is often said we cannot choose our parents and have to accept those we are living with. However, if I had the choice to make of anyone else in this world,
of sort of ages. I can see the skin as you feel that for in your heart. And I met with one mother after seven years. My brother Jason, and your brothers Neville, Keith, Anderson, and Ben. 